Short game wise, yes, I can. Long game wise, no. No, I have not. He's talking the long game. They played the long game. The long game. They gotta play the long game. They play the long game. They're experienced and they played the long game. The long game. You're talking the long game. They're experienced and they played the long game. Very nice. Long game is back. All right, Case, good to see you. Long game is back. Reaction to some good golf on TV, my friend. What's your what's your uh, what's your reaction? I know you're deep you're deep in the in the YouTube this week. Good to be good to be back and be able to watch some golf, huh? Yeah, I was shocked at how much golf I, I watched, even to the point that I barely watched any NFL this weekend. I watched, I've heard, I watched none yesterday. I've heard multiple people say that, and it's so funny because right now. Between us talking, all the golf podcasts and stuff that I consume, everyone loves to bitch about the PGA Tour and what's happening with golf, us included. And then, like, boom, there's a great tournament, and like, you just have short term memory, and like, everything's awesome right now. And, and what's really incredible about this week is that that's one of the historically one of the worst, most boring tournaments, one of the worst fields. Um, three different courses, kind of hard to follow. They don't have cameras at every single course on every hole. Uh, but I was shocked at how how interested I was. There was so much flip flopping of the leaderboard, and obviously uh, Dunlap, the amateur coming through, was like incredible television. But it really was a good case for just the popularity of the tour, I think, because it really elevated that event. Um, like you were saying too, and, and I just mentioned, I, I heard from a bunch of people that said they they didn't watch football really much yesterday. I'm sure. I mean, football is king, and golf does a good job of trying to avoid scheduling conflicts, but they couldn't really avoid one this weekend. And I thought it was really must see golf. Really. You said that it's, it's historically that course is hard to cover. Is that a, I did see people talking about the coverage, like in general, the, well, there's three courses they play. Ah, right. So you think about the tour and all the broadcast teams, they probably have how, how much equipment do they have for each Right. So, you know? so they have a fixed set of equipment. They can't just triple. They're not going to triple that for one one event, and then they um, can't set up and move everything. Yeah, that's that's me saying that. I'm not sure if that's really the case. Maybe it's staffing. I don't know. But um, Dunlap shot like a 60 at La Quinta Country Club on Saturday, and there yes. was like five different like videos of it. Like it was very hard to find. The shot link only works, I think, on the main stadium course there. So, who knows? Maybe they'll put more money into it next year. But um, I thought it was really incredible golf. It's pretty wild to think that a sophomore in college can win a PGA Tour event. I mean, we talk about this a lot too, but I, I think this is the best sport in the world, and this is another case for why. Like, what? Let's go through all the sports. Football. Is there a twenty-year-old amateur just kind of stumbling onto a game and and winning a? I don't know, not a championship, but winning like a big game or something. It doesn't happen there baseball i mean it's so like intentional all these other sports how you get to the show and golf just has this element of you know you can have jack nicholas win the 86 masters 10 years after he's really been on top of his game you can have tiger do the same after all he went through you can have a, a kid that just turned 20 i think a month ago come and get his exemption win two years on on tour it was really really fun to watch it's uh it to me it shows how the like how good that kid must be to win that much to win the junior am to win the am to win this tournament because you got to figure like at some point being a human being nervous and feeling the pressure would would take over at some point and i had watched a little bit and i flipped back on when they were on 16 and he had like a 15 foot slider and like no problem just knocked it in and i was like holy shit and that's when they that's what they, 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 that tied him and Burns at 29. And then they go to the next, the par three, and he hit it on the green. And Burns kind of leaked one out into the water. And, and I was like, wow. And then the up and down he made on 18, like he, he, he did what, I, what any one of us would have done, which is like, you know, send one. Well, I, I guess you can't go left on that hole. So he, so he hits it way right. He hits a second shot way right. He hit a ridiculous chip. I got to, I got some, I got to have, I have some Brandle stuff we got to talk about. Because I wanted to hear about the technique, about how he hit that chip shot. And Brandel's going on doing some monologue about his guts and all this nonsense. And then he made a you know six footer to win. That was that was sick. That was sick. I mean that 
that had to have been the hardest six footer in the history of golf, right? I mean, that my knees would have been. I don't, I don't been. know about that. It was, I mean, it was like a pretty straight putt. I don't mean, I obviously don't, I don't mean, yeah, I think his caddy said to him, your mom could make this putt, which I don't, I'm not sure what my caddy's saying that to me. Did he yeah, say that? I, I read that after, yeah. Yikes. Um, Cancel that guy. Cancel him. <laughs> uh, it was cool watching like his parents and his, his girlfriend. It was, it was funny watching the interaction between the parents and the girlfriend. She must not be, maybe they've been together for a while, but it didn't seem like it. So it was kind of like a, do we hug her? Do we embrace her? She's going to be in this clip forever. Is she going to be around forever? Um, but we don't need to get into his relationship yet. Let him. No, that is weird. That is something I think about. I have a, I have a, somebody in my circle, and they dated someone for a long time, and they were always in, in pictures, and they'd always force them to be in the pictures and the family pictures, and then like boom, all of a sudden that person's like they're not dating anymore. I think when you're young, you got to be careful, man. This guy's only a sophomore. They're only sophomores in college, you know. Like I. I Think about think about your relationship. Think about my relationship. I didn't even know my wife when, when wow. I was a sophomore in college. So yeah, you just got to hang back a little bit. Yeah. But hey, uh, we're, I'm also excited because we're about to we're finally getting to that good stretch of golf, right? I we know. got Farmers this week. We got the AT and T next week. We got Waste Management. We're we're here, man. We <laughs> we, we have we, done this podcast through through whatever the Hero World Challenge and the RSM and these other nonsense tournaments. We finally got some good some good golf here. Yeah, we made it. We definitely <laughs> we definitely made it. Um, speaking on eighteen uh, with Dunlap, that that second shot he hit right where him and JT had that conversation walking up the uh, fairway about you smoke that guy, um, and he hit the like what a break that was. Not that, not that going. No, right that there was is, a huge break. I, it just kind of like he he hit it into the crowd, and then all the ball just kind of kept leaking and trickling. Like he was down in that little collection area, which has seemed like a pretty reasonable chip. He could have easily been up on one of those mounds, and and had a much tougher chip to that back left pin. So yes, you're 100 percent right. That and and it's not like the U.S. Open where the the rough you go right or left, you miss the fairway. It's gonna really penalize yeah. you. That it's so trampled down and. You know, you could see the different in the color, just the, the brown grass versus the green. It was almost like a big funnel, but huge break there. Um, I, I really started watching. I picked up yesterday, Sunday, I think about the eighth or ninth hole. So I, I got a I got a great front row view of that. I think it was the first or second hole I, I saw him play was the the shot that he hit in the water at Dunlap um, when he missed it right. And I could just see like they even said they just brought about 10 different people back into play here with him like i think he was up three shots at the time or two um but to to have to have that kind of a collapse and then to right the ship is one of the more impressive things of the whole the whole weekend yeah i didn't see i didn't see that but apparently it was like a, a borderline shank and yeah for me i'm a mental uh, i'm not very mentally strong <laughs> yet on the golf course. And so I can tell you that if I was winning anything and I hit one in the water there, it would have been over. Well, it's <laughs> it weird. It reminded over. me of, of like a March Madness basketball game, like round one where oh, I Kentucky know. is the two seed and they're down like 14 to who knows, you know, Wichita State, yeah. Central, whatever. Sure. And you know they're not going to win. So you're just kind of waiting. Like when are the wheels going to come off? When Like the little first sign of, of trouble, yeah. when is when are things going to flip? Yeah. And that I thought was that moment, and he completely yeah, like that, that rebounded game, with a birdie. That yeah. game, like it ends up being like Kentucky ends up winning by twelve, and like on paper, it doesn't look like it was ever that close. But if you watched it, that whole game, you're kind of waiting for that yeah. to flip. You know, those are those, you know, the uh, the charts of um, expected win, whatever, and they go like this. Yeah, it's one of those. A uh, couple, like, couple other things. Uh, J- I do you like JT. Are you are you into JT? JT guy. Yeah, I like I like him because I think he's a he's a personality. I'm not sure he completely is as deserving of all the attention, at least recently that he he gets. But I I find him interesting, not in the same way I find like a Spieth interesting. But I I think he's um, I think he's more of just like a a guy that's going to go out and swing it versus Spieth, who's a lot more in his head. But yeah. Um, I, enjoy I mean, like, do you, you do you want him? Like, I think golf is. I, I'm I'm good to see him back in the mix a little bit. He's he's a guy that I I think of in my head when I think of top ten players in the world. Like, I like, especially with all everything that's going on with fractured golf. Like, I want all the good guys to be good and at least have the tour yeah. have the have their best players out there doing totally. something meaningful. So that was good to see. But interest. I saw this on Twitter. Um, so he. He finished in the top five, and then he withdrew from 
this week's tournament. Why do you think somebody would, why, why would he do that? He just got, got a couple points and he's like, all right, this is good. I'm off to a good start. I'm not going to go play. I'm not going to go play this week. Yeah. It's hard to tell this, especially this year, if the new schedule is the reason why a lot of guys are playing earlier in the year, whereas the season usually started towards the fall and this would be kind of, I don't know, 10 or 15 weeks into the season. Uh, I have to think for him, it's, he missed out on a lot of stuff the end of last year because he was short on FedEx Cup points. He didn't make um, the FedEx Cup playoff at all, I don't think. And that's why he was grinding those last three or four weeks, the ones that kind of led into the, the end of the season to try to get, I think he got, he missed the cup by like one or two. But one, I got to think he's doing that um, and just getting reps in. But two, he doesn't, like he doesn't have all the exemptions for everything. So he's trying to go out and earn it. He, ever since that PGA Championship win, he hasn't really done much. And he hadn't really done much before then. Uh, so he's kind of playing catch up or else I'm sure he, he wants to make it into the signature events and he probably just doesn't have the have the points yet, I would think. What do you think about the low? What's your opinion on the scoring so far this year? Is that just how these tournaments are? I don't know enough historically. Are these just always insanely low scores or is there something here where like, do we need to roll? We need to roll everything back because it's just becoming absolutely crazy. What's your take? I think it's just a, uh, I think it's just a byproduct of the schedule, and I think they they start in Hawaii and on the West Coast for a reason. I mean, Tory Pines isn't isn't a cakewalk. Um, that that will be closer to probably twelve to fourteen under this weekend coming up. But um, I think it has to do with like you're playing three different courses, a huge field, um, and I think so. I heard someone say it like maybe on the broadcast, like, why wouldn't you want to come out here and start your season making some birdies in Palm Springs? So I think it's a, <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. Like it's, a, it's a natural progression back East from Hawaii. Everyone spent two or three weeks over there. Uh, and again, my, I, I've been out in that area. It's a beautiful place to play golf and just live. So there's yeah, a the great Coachella shot of Valley. Dunlop on the last hole with like this huge mountain and the sun setting behind him. And it was like, this is picturesque. Yeah, it's amazing. That's how I felt even just in Vegas. The golf, like just the the the, the setting there is is so cool. The cut for this event was thirteen under. <laughs> it was a three day cut too. It was a three. Oh yeah, that's right. Three day cut. Uh, I just was looking at. It. I saw I saw somebody tweet this on on Twitter. Um, maybe it was Monday Q info or a case whatever that guy's Twitter account is. But yeah. Justin Saw was the last guy on the cut line. He shot 71, 67, 66. Imagine shooting 71, 67, 66. You don't make a dollar and you got to go no. home. No, it's crazy. And it, I heard a bunch of guys say this too, but like it is an easy course. The greens are perfect, so they're rolling so well. It's easy to make birdies if you're getting close to the pins. Um, but you still got to go out and do it. And some of the guys, just, if you didn't have your putting that day, like you were going to shoot maybe two or three under, and that's so far behind the, the, the field. What I found really cool about the scoring when it's this this low is people can just come out of nowhere. Uh, like, um, I'm not even going to try to, should I call him Bez? How, how do we pronounce uh, See, I was listening Asian to Shotgun start this, this. I was listening to Shotgun Start this morning, and they were calling him Seabez. I kind of like that, Seabez. I'm going to end up calling him Seabass, but sure, Seabez. Like he... Zayden Hunt, I think is his last name. Yeah, yeah. He came out of nowhere because he sh he played so well. But like I, I love that where in a in a tournament like the Masters, which is my favorite, I'm not criticizing at all. But if like last year with Rom and and Kepka, there was only two guys that whole day that could win, right? Yeah. So that's fun in its own way watching two studs come down. But if they're two kind of you know no name guys, it's a little different. Uh, but I love that. Like even Xander made a run at the end yesterday. So of course, I mean, have you ever watched professional? I know enough about the PGA Tour. What a shocker! What a shocker! Xander made a a meaningless run at the end. He, and he loves to threaten to win, but he's, he's <laughs> yeah, he's never. I'm, I'm, never I'm there. on PGA Tour.com going down the leaderboard a little bit, and um, there's a guy on here, T14, Bronson Burgoon. Mm. Is that the best name you've ever heard? I'm like, who is this guy? He turned pro in 2010. He is 676 in the world. Just do you want to, to do just, a little impromptu um, career money list? Uh, yes, I would love. I would love to. I would love to tell you. Uh, I, I I have it right in front of me. How much money has this guy made in his life, Case? Uh, playing golf since 2010. <laughs> no, I don't know uh, on DraftKings. Yes, playing golf. No, yes, but th since 2010. Uh, it says so. It says turn pro 2010. He joined the PGA. He joined the tour in 2016. 
All right, I'm going to say 4.1 million. Wow. Come on. How good are you at this game? It's 4.05. 4. So, wow. so you're 50 grand off. It's very Whew. good. I was um, off by like like a half million on who last week? Uh, I don't know. Someone uh, obscure too. Not obscure, we looked. I think it was Lee Trevino, like career earnings or something. Oh, he was like a million. Oh, right? no, Chris Kirk. It was, Kirk. A, it was Chris a, Kirk. Oh, Kirk. That's right. That's right. The, the slinger. Uh, how did our guys do? Want to check in on our grinder store real quick? Yeah. Uh, you're asking that because you probably already know. There was one of us made a single dollar this weekend. No, and it was I, you. I have, I have no Camilo idea. Who was it Camillo? Yeah. Everybody else missed the cut. Every single person that we picked on both sides missed the cut. Camillo won you a cool eighteen thousand dollars. So you're still about one point four million behind me in the in the season long race for the the grinders tour. But um, yeah, Camillo. And to your point, like we're now into the really meaty part or getting into the meaty part of the schedule. It's becoming harder and harder to find guys outside the one fifty that you've either you have a hunch on or not just picking a random name. Yeah. So you can tell the fields are getting strong, stronger and stronger. But real quick, back on, on the, the MX, um, Cbez we're calling him, right? Does yeah, he owe? Yep. Does he owe Dunlap some money? So second place was supposed to was supposed to get nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, first place one point five million. Yeah. Because Dunlap's an amateur, he wins zero dollars, right? He sure. gets exemptions, all that stuff, but he sure. gets zero dollars. So that ju- it doesn't. I thought it might just get redistributed. I think it just they move everything down one peg. So which is C- insane. In second. Every one right. of those guys made a couple hundred grand more because Dunlap won this tournament. So that right? that is a good point. I mean, everyone in the field owes him a little money, but I, obviously it's going to be more apparent at the top. Cbez, Cbass, I'm calling him. Cbass. He made six hundred thousand dollars more than he should have because yeah, Nick Dunlap was the was the amateur. So yeah, but, I think he I think he owes him something like not more than a dinner, obviously. But I don't know how that works with uh, nil. How you can get money to college kids these days? Yeah, but after taxes, it's basically like not that much. Yeah, know? plus the caddy. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts. So this is funny. My I forget. It's probably my dad that always says. But after after taxes, you know, a million and a half after taxes, he's probably fifty percent of that's probably going away. So. Uh, hey, he just deposited a cool little, you know, 700, 800 grand. Doesn't hurt. Any guess at C, our guy, this guy, Cbez, um, would any guess on his OWGR if you don't know already? I bet he's better than you'd think. Um, I don't think he's in the outside the top 150 because I don't think we've seen him in our list to pick. I'm going to say he's number 84. 56. Wow. 56 he he's been on tour last year was his or two years ago he joined the tour 2022 he's already made 6.6 you've heard him before right I, yes i have he yeah, yeah. seems to be that guy i mean his name is he's one of those guys that just seems to be like you're watching like the the masters on a friday and he's like you know t6 or something like that and you're like who who is this guy yeah. but there's like the anyway, last guy in the president's cup this is what like this that. is like what i love about golf is like doing these little like silly games with you like yeah, i don't even care if anybody listens to this like this this guy you know how good this guy is at golf and and you know he's make he's made six million bucks in two years on tour he's he's top 60 in the world and he could walk down my street right now and not a single person would have any idea who this guy is i don't know about him but you can tell me if you have it up but my favorite things about guys like this, these kind of international kind of guys that come out of nowhere the last few years. He's from South Africa, I think. South Africa, yeah. Hard name pronounce, all this stuff. And then you probably look what college you went to, and it's like Texas Tech. <laughs> no, Some like yeah. Big Ten, Big Twelve school. Yeah, that that is usually that is usually true. Or like uh, you know, like Sep where's Sep Straka from? Oh, uh, like Austria? Yeah, and but he he went to Georgia. Yeah, he yeah. lives in Georgia. You know, he plays these yeah. guys like the the he plays on the Ryder Cup European team. <laughs> like um, Matt Fitzpatrick did like a semester or two at Northwestern. Like yeah. I, I know I know he's not coming from uh, the UK. That's like bright and sunny, but it's just a funny pitch to someone. Like, hey, come out to Chicago. You'll play for three weeks while there's still some yeah. daylight out. Hey, um, l- uh, last la- couple couple things to tie up this Nick Nick Dunlap uh, Nick Dunlap mm-hmm. thing. I know he's going to make more money in his career, right? And everybody's quick to be like, "Well, he d- it doesn't matter. He doesn't need the money." It can never feel great to be like, "Hey, you could have had one and a half million dollars, say, but you didn't." Obviously, there's going to be good things coming with sponsorships and future money that he's going to yeah. have to go earn, but like. Geez, I don't know. A million and a half in the bank, or you know, 
nine hundred grand in the bank after taxes, like for someone who's 20, 20 years old, like that doesn't that's always gonna sting a little bit. At least that's how I think about it. I'm a capitalist. Yeah. So what can I say? Yeah, it's I guess it's just a like it's such a it's just a product of the setup of how amateur golfers are classified when they play yeah. in these things. Which whatever. I mean, it's to happen so infrequently. I, not whatever, I'm sure he's thinking one point five million dollars, not whatever, but I guess in his mind, he's probably justifying it. Would he pay $1.5 million for a two-year exemption, that kind of exposure, yeah. publicity, sponsorship? You're, you're right. It's, it's yeah. still leaving money on the table. But he, look, he knew that. He signed the permission slip. He knew that going into the week. If you don't like it, don't win it. So how does, how does this how – does, do you know how this works? Like, Does he have to decide – to turn pro like does he have a is a two-year exemption from this date or when he decides to turn pro and is there anything that you've read or heard what he's going to do there's a ton of stuff flying back and forth i've seen i think it's people are figuring this out on the fly because it's again it, it hasn't happened in 33 34 years uh, what i saw was that he a big consideration of what he has to do and the decisions he has to make now less so about turning pro or obviously about turning pro but he has so many exemptions for tournaments that he won through the U S amateur that could be lost if he turns pro right now. So I think I read like he's in the masters no matter what, because the amateur gets in plus if you win a tour event, so he's got two ways into the masters. That's, that's fine. Um, I think the PJ championship he's in either way, the U S open, he gets a spot because he won the U S am last year, but I think it's the, the open, that if he turned pro today or any time before the summer, he would lose that exemption, I believe. Oh, interesting, because it, but he could still that's, earn only it for, that's only for the top, am, like the person who won the AM gets to play, even though that's still him. So it's such a dumb Yeah, I think sport. every major has a different, and uh, they have a different qualification, ways you can get in, whether it's, but I think, I'm pretty sure the USAM gets um, the Masters and the, the the open the, the british open i'm not sure if the u.s open is included in that but he had maybe had a different way in but he could still qualify for all these things um and there was some confusion whether he would qualify for the uh the signature events coming up which is, are the big money ones this this season on tour um but it's interesting i mean imagine being like a sophomore in college and being like i'm not ready to leave college you know like again the money is the money and you apparently you know essentially you go to school to to find a career right and prepare you for a career if you can if you found the career you know through a few weeks of your sophomore year or a few months of your sophomore year i guess I you gotta go take it but what would you do it's so tough because my perspective on this is now coming at this from a 30 as a 36 year old with you know a family and whatever but it's hard to try. That's just a, such a, he's a kid. He's still a kid. He's a young kid. And to, to give up those two years and like, obviously it's easy to be like, but the money, the mom, you know how good his life is, <laughs> you know, like he's at Alabama. He's the best pit. He's the, he's, you know, plays at Alabama. He's one of the best golfers in the world. He's playing golf. Like he's probably having a black, like his life is a blast with or without the money. But it's just you don't know anything could anything could happen. He could get injured. It could all go away. He yeah. could get the YWIPSs. Like you just don't know. I kind of I'm torn on it. Like I feel like you got to capitalize on it when you have that momentum. He's also not like Tiger generational. Doesn't seem to at least be generational talent. Um, gosh, I don't I don't know. I'd love to see him. I think he's probably just going to have to turn pro and just. Go. I, I see he's in the field this week, but it, yeah. it could just be a sponsor's exemption. I but think if, you, he again, already, if you win, you yeah. get a lot of exemptions. Yeah. I think so. they said he already. The, I, when I was watching this weekend, they said he was already playing in the in the farmers anyway. So, oh. anyway, we're we're on the watch here. It'll be interesting. It's an interesting storyline to to follow. Uh, I couldn't believe the amount of your boy Brandel calling him Nick Dunlop on the 18th hole. Like, come on, what are we doing here? Do we? Oh, actually, before we talk about Brandel, they had this stat, which I need to just show you real quick. Um, and and you might already know this, but before Dun, Dunlop's Dunlap 60 on Saturday, do you know who had the lowest PGA Tour round ever by an amateur until that point? Um, I'm just going to use context clues and say it's, it's uh, Bryson just because you're such a Bryson fanboy. <laughs> No, no, it's better than that. It's better than that. 
Uh, Friday, June 24th, 2011, UCLA star Patrick Cantlay shoots 60, the lowest PGA Tour round ever by an amateur. He shot 60. He shot a 10 under 60 uh, to take a four stroke lead in the 2011 Travelers Championship. I got the concept right. One of your fanboys, <laughs> right? Just <laughs> the wrong guy. You did. So that's wild. So, so that Project is. Pat had a four stroke lead as an amateur going in the final round of the Travelers, which obviously he, he didn't win or we would have heard about it. But that's wild. Yeah. He probably Good had for like you, an, Pat. He had like an econ paper due the next day. So he had to. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't early. need to study. He doesn't need to study for that. And uh, okay, also I had this queued up. Um, would you rather? This is a would you rather? Would you rather have the one and a half million dollars um, for winning or finishing second in this tournament, or a lifetime supply of Malbon golf apparel? Which would you rather have? Ooh, can I donate the Malbon apparel or, or resell it? <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, hey, dude. Do you know how much streetwear resells for? Like that. That shit's fire, bro. That would be. That would be crazy. Yeah, I'd probably just take the money and then buy the Malbon stuff, right? And I love reading. I, so, so if you go on Instagram and you see any of the Jason Day Mal, Malbon stuff, like it's literally split right down the middle. Half of the comments are like, "You, this is dope streetwear in the golf. You don't understand." And then the other half is like, "I, what, what is, what is he wearing? Is this, is this like an Australian streetwear?" trend thing that we're just not up on i don't think so are we sure that it's not no i'm pretty sure like malbon i'm pretty sure malbon is is uh it's just a la but yeah they're the the los angeles based lifestyle brand malbon wants people malbon wants people to associate the word cool with golf and lifestyle surrounding the sport oh great making golf cool again Let's make golf cool again. You and me, we're gonna we're gonna make a streetwear brand. We're gonna bring back. We're gonna revive Cutter and Buck. I think that's our opportunity. You know, right. you've said you you said you always want to get into clothing and make a clothing brand. Like this is yeah. the opportunity. All right, Cutter and Bucks. I guess where we start. Long game apparel with like really long, you know, shirts and everything. So yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that idea. Let's let's cut this so no one steals it. All right, no one makes where a competitive go? offer to where? to Cutter and Buck against us. What, do we need to do? Do we need to do farmers? Well, you want to talk about Brandle for a second? You brought him up, and then yes, let's talk about Brandle. You texted me. I'm making the kids' lunches, watching the end of the game, watching the end of the golf last night. Um, you said you got some Brandle takes, so hit me. Yeah, I don't know if I have Brandle takes. I have um, just a hot take. He doesn't bother <laughs> me, like at all. Okay, no. I'm, Did I'm he bother you? I think he bothers a lot of people. Uh, no, he's saying about no. him. I, I don't, it doesn't, he doesn't rub me though. Like he's very, um, like you're saying, he's a little long winded, right? He's not going to give you the X's and O's as much as he's going to set the stage for like paint the picture of where, how this moment fits into the history of the game. He's kind of like a historian like that. Um, yeah, but I think there's just so much piling on with him with like the Brooks thing and the live stuff that people just love to, you know, pile on. And now he's like the face or the enemy face of golf for all the live people uh, he says some ridiculous things so does just about everyone on tv um yeah it's tough, i don't know it's i find him be... sometimes insightful i don't think like i don't there's no one on tv i i agree with everything they say but he i think he gets way too much shit. and he kind of i know he's done the booth before but he really seamlessly fit in he could have been part of like a a 10 person crew you know um and you wouldn't yeah. have really noticed him which i think is kind of a compliment you know, it, it, when I went to him, it, I didn't stop so much and, and be like, oh, this is Brandle. I was just, you know, I found myself listening to what he had to say. No, I don't I don't have a problem with him at all. I think he's become like almost a meme of sorts in golf yeah. Twitter and in golf culture. I, I have no problem with him. Uh, I thought he I thought he did a good job per- personally. And I this is not a not a knock on Brandle. I'm just more interested in like when they. I love the player and he what he was a player obviously. Mm-hmm. I I like the I like the bringing in a player former player who knows a little bit who talks a little bit more about the game a little bit and like you know why you might hit this club or this club and you're going to flight this club down and he's going to and so I thought Kiz was I thought Kevin Kisner was was just better in that but I I I subscribed this newsletter from this guy Jeff Shackelford who's like a golf yeah. uh, golf course you know architecture guy. Yeah, I'm he's a great. big golf course architecture guy. And he said in his newsletter that I had this morning, speak of Chamblay, he was a noticeable upgrade over Kevin Kisner's bro-heavy rooting during the century. 
The controversial Golf Channel pundit delivered refined observations and analysis you'd hope to hear in a lead chair, even if I don't ever recall his Texas accent ever being that strong. Uh, unnecessary this is, shots at yeah, kids. This for, is, exactly. This is kind of my thing. Like, why does, like, I know this is how the world works now, so I, I, I don't want to sound naive, but, like, why is one versus the other? Why couldn't you have both? Like, why couldn't you have a broadcast with both those guys? Yeah. Like, kids on whatever hole, so-and-so and whatever. I guess it's like you want the main guy. Yeah the main second color guy. Well, I think they don't know what they're doing yet. They're trying to find... No, they're, they're trying, they're to, trying find, to figure it out. Yeah, they're trying to figure it out. Apparently, everybody that follows golf coverage closely, maybe this is UK, so I'm curious to hear your opinion. They, they rave about CBS. CBS is like outpacing NBC. Would you agree with that? The CBS has their golf product on TV a little bit more dialed. Yeah, I think CBS knows who they are a little more. I think, to, I mean, as you're seeing now, NBC is going through a lot of people, but I feel like to me, it's more, I never really thought until recently more uh, so much about like critically about these golf announcers. I've been, I'm a huge sports fan. Like I cannot, I hear Reggie Miller's voice. I get like hair on the back of my head. My head stands up. Like I'm, I, I, there's so many announcers in different sports that I try to avoid. Like Phil Sims, like that was like, like this back in the day. I never really had that so much for golf because there's so many different people that they're throwing around to, but I, I don't know. I, he doesn't bother me. I think. Sorry, outside of Reggie, who who is who is who is your most hated television voice? It's Reggie. Mm. Yeah, he's up. There. I mean, there's guys that I just, I guess, color and play by play is a different conversation. Um, there's play by play guys I hear when I tune in, like if it's a national game, whatever sport, that I'll be like, oh, this guy kind of like this. This guy's you know, plain Jane is, I'm not going to get much. Then there's the, the two or three guys that are like the best, like the Mike Breen's, the Mike Gorman's, uh, in the basketball Eagle. world. Like, yeah, like, like, uh, yeah, I, I don't, he's not one of my favorites. He can be a little bit, um, I don't know. I don't know. A little bit cheesy sometimes I feel like, but I don't mind. I, I think he's great. Uh, but the Reggie Millers, Chris Weber, who I think they got rid of was pretty bad for a while too. Um, but I never, I never had that with golf so much. But for me, it was, it's like, these are the people on the, like, I, I don't even need to see the channel or the Peacock or the CBS. I like, I used to just be able to like walk into a room while a golf broadcast was on. I could tell you like, oh, I know this is NBC ever since they got rid of Johnny Miller, or I guess he retired maybe four or five years ago. It seems like they're just searching for a whole new kind of revamp. And, um, I guess I like, um, who's the host Terry Gannon. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's Dan Hicks too. I like. I think I like Terry Gann a little better than Dan Hicks. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. That that that, that NBC broadcast kind of always. They, uh, they're all very. Wait, was this NBC this week? Or yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it yeah. was. Uh, that's but always kind of. NBC yeah. gives me like because when I hear Dan Hicks, I'm thinking like I'm listening to, like the four by one hundred <laughs> freestyle like Michael <laughs> Phelps. It's like an Olympic thing, where it's I don't see hit. I like when I hear. Dan Hicks, I don't think of him as like a golf specific guy, even though that's what he does the majority of. Uh, you remember, know, when, Bob's little you remember when Bob Costas had pink eye during the Olympics? Yes, I do. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> and he that, like that acknowledged the internet. Of course I remember. He like acknowledge, acknowledges yes and yes, I do have pink eye or something like that. <laughs> I love shit like that. Yeah, me too. All right, let's mm -hmm. talk about let's talk about the farmers real quick. And I I do want to tell you a story that I've been putting off for a while today. So let's talk about the farmers. Sure. Do I so, need to do guest and sponsor for this one? It's the no, you know it's it. the you, farmers insurance. So we are farmers. Don't 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 don't. Yeah. yeah, we know it. Now, do you know that farmer? This is I think one of the. This is not the last one, but one of the last. I think they have one or two after this. They they're, they're not out. renewing their their um, sponsorship of yeah, of which the event. is smart. Like who, who could? How do you measure this? I'm a like as a marketing guy myself. Like who, the CMO of farmers. Like the, are they able to say that they got? seven more people to buy their insurance this this year because they sponsored the farmers i have no fucking idea well they dropped works. ricky too well i don't know if they dropped them but they're <laughs> i don't know if they're gonna renew that either and he's not there which i think he's like basically co-hosts this event every year uh real quick on farmers and going back to uh nick dunlap and the, the mx last week i sent sure. you the screenshot last night but they had a nbc put up um or the golf channel put up a big uh graphic of the I think it's the eight or nine amateurs to win on the tour since 1940. Obviously, Dunlap yesterday or this weekend, 
Nicholson in 91. But one of the guys, Gene Littler, 1954, he won the 1954 Farmers Insurance Open. This goes back to, uh, I'm sure that wasn't the first one. Like this thing goes back years and years. So that's kind of a big deal that they're going away, right? Like to your point, like how do you measure it? It's not something they just got into like 10 years ago. This is just part of their measuring it since. And it's always been, it's always been the farmers at Tory. That's always been. I don't know if it's always been at Tory, but I'm just based on this graphic, 1954 farmers insurance open. Like I get to think, I don't know. Like when. If you had, if you gave me, if I had no idea, and you gave me a list of all PGA Tour events, and be like, which ones predate like the '60s? I would not have had Farmers Insurance open on that list, would you? No, it's kind of a shocking I, one. Yeah, I, I think outside of like the majors and the players, I'm not even sure I'd be able to to tell you one. And just to think that a brand, like for a brand to be around that long and investing in the PGA Tour that long, is is pretty wild. Uh, all right, let's let's do our grinders. Let's do our our grinders picks for the week you, 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 real quick. You didn't want me to mention Frank Stranahan who in 1945 won the Durham war bond tournament. That was the name of the, the, the presenting now, sponsor. Now do you think, do you think that was like to promote war bonds? Was it, if you won, you got war bonds. How did, how do you think that worked? Yeah. And who's Durham, the Durham war bond tournament. And like after the war, were they, is that still the sponsor or was it like the Durham peacetime? I don't know. We got to do. We're going to do more digging on this. I think there's something here, Dave, of climbing into old sponsor uh, tournament sponsor names from like the 50s and 60s. I think yeah. there's there's one of these on the list. The guy who won in 1954. He won the North and South Championship. That's just the name of it, which I'm pretty sure is just the Civil War. The North and, <laughs> North and, South. and South Championship. Kerry Middlecoff, 1945. So how about this? Three guys amateurs. He won. was a, he was a flusher. That guy. Yeah, he yeah he sure was. In the north, but he, he took it to the south. Okay, you want to go do picks. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're at Torrey Pines this weekend. Pretty good yeah. field. Um, not the best, but it's not it's not a signature event, nor, nor was last week. But yeah. um, I think people, again, wouldn't you rather go make birdies in Palm Springs than yeah. hack out of the rough at sure. Torrey Pines? Sure. Um, defending ter- uh, tournament champion, Max Homa. I don't Max believe Homa. in the field again. But again, we're picking outside the 150, just as a recap. Uh, on, but you say date. he's not. You say he's not in the field. I don't think he's in the field this week, is he? Why would he not play? That's a good question. I'm not sure why not, but I don't see him. On my, oh, maybe he is. Yeah, he, he is. Sorry. Who there does is. your research? Uh, good question. Can I get okay. a first pick? Can I get a first pick or something? Well, I'm, I was going to say we, I don't think we've ever had this before. So you won last week. Let's go. So I'm going to get whoever wins can determine if you want to go first or second in the snake draft. Yeah, I want to go first, and go I'm trying to get off. I'm trying to get some some momentum here, and so I'm going to stop overthinking a little bit. Um, this guy is number 155 in the world. He has won on tour in the past two seasons. Uh, his name is uh, Davis. Don't call me Riley. Davis Riley. That's like my it. first pick. Um, you only get one pick, though. I only get one pick. All right, you go ahead. You're up. I don't know how the snake draft works yet. We're going to figure it out one of these days, I swear. Um, I'm going to go with some guys – that I believe are in the field on medical exemptions, not to um, circumnavigate the the uh, rules here. I'm going to go first go with Mr. Johnny Vegas, number 494 in the world. He was a yeah. T25 last year at this exact tournament. Wow. Um, and then for my second pick on the back-to-back double, I'm going to go guy who made his, his debut uh, last week in Palm Springs for the first time since, I believe, the Open at Brookline. Uh, the, the U.S. Open at Brookline last year. This would be. I'm going with Daniel Berger. Wow! Did he play? He played this week, right? He How did, did he? This is uh, first I saw back. It's funny. Is this is we talked about this a little bit, but you see him he'll be like, oh, he finished. I don't know, eight under. It's like a yeah. really shitty week. He was eight. Oh, he under. made the cut. He did, but. It's hard to tell. Like I can't tell you how well he played just by his score. Because right, T T thirty nine, sixty eight, sixty eight, sixty seven, sixty eight, T thirty nine. What's I that? Know. Like a minus eleven? What is that? Did you imagine not playing professional golf for basically two years and and breaking seventy four days in a row? It's just no, no, I can't. All right, so so you got your guys. Um, I got two. Of, You've got two in a row. Of, yeah, I got. Uh, I'm gonna go with Matt Maverick McNeely. Uh, also on a major medical exemption here, uh, and I'm also gonna take Parker Cootie. He was. Um, the corn fairy tour stud. I don't know why I'm picking him. Um, you know, just some something to watch this weekend. And, How do you spell uh, that last name? 
C O O D Y. Parker Cootie. Cootie. That's yeah, how we're pronouncing. We think it's those, Cootie. Yeah. We come on. Okay. It's ridiculous. It's like All someone right. trying to over pronounce your 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 last name. Well, you came in hot with some Malbon takes last week. Sorry, <laughs> Malbon. There you go. Malbon. Malbon. We think. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to go to Australia or LA. Where are they again? We'll figure uh, out. Tory. That's right. Uh, all right, my last California. pick. I got a bunch of guys to consider here. Uh, Hayden Springer, who had a great story, yeah, made it to Q School. He actually had a little share of the lead for a little bit. I think on Thursday or Friday last week, I was considering him, but I think I'm going to go with uh, number 157 in the world. He's made the cut here at least five years in a row that I can see. It's Mr. Kevin Streelman. One of those names where you're mm. not very exciting, but you've seen him. At some point on a leaderboard, many times over the last few yeah. years. Yeah, I've seen that. So you got Davis Riley, Maverick McNeil, yep, and Parker Cootie. Oh, Parker Cootie, pretty good name team. Uh, I got Johnny Vegas, Daniel Berger, and Kevin Streelman. All right, so we will see. You've got about a one point four million dollar hole in this season long uh, Grinders Tour challenge we've got here, and the, the loser is going to have to. It's hard, man. Outside person. the one hundred and fifty, there's not a lot of guys that like, I especially know with the better or... fields. Now we're gonna have to do something different for the majors because it just there won't be a ton of guys like at the masters yeah. that are yeah we just need to play. flip a coin and i can pick scotty scheffler each major and i'll get back into this yeah you can have on hell cabrera at the at the masters this year if he gets his visa thing worked up do you have any make the cases or inner ob or, or or do you want me to tell you a story uh you i i have a few but i want you to tell me the story first we can end with that okay um all right so here this is a story so I guess this is in this is in the realm of inner OB or relax, bro. It's just not that serious. But at the course that I play out of, there's a there's a there's a bunch. They do a bunch of different season long tournaments thing that you can do. So I usually play. So last year was my first like foray into competitive golf, and so I did. These are outside of the the club that I play at. This is like Vermont Golf Association tournaments. Just try to play in some stroke play things. Yada yada yada. But they also have some kind of season long things at the at the golf course that I that I play at. And I like to play in them because I like to just get in guaranteed golf. Days where I know that I can play, but I don't have to go find three or four people to go play with. This is yeah. like a FedEx Cup kind of thing where you're accumulating points for something, or it's just no, like this a weekly. Is, this, they call it it's called the President's Cup. And what it is, is just a match play bracket that takes like yeah. the year to get through, right? And so anybody can play in it and it's um it's adjusted based on your handicap. And so I've played a match. I'm a, I'm a two. I've played a match against a nine or a 14 or a zero. And, you know, it, it gets challenging as you play guys that are, you know, for me to be a two and play a guy that's a nine, that's a tough match. That's a tough match to win giving, giving seven strokes. Right. And so, um, you, you play, you play throughout the year, you win a match, you keep going. I get paired with this guy last year who is a notorious, He's a zero, zero scratch golfer, good, good player, but he's a notorious, uh, rule, rule bender, rule breaker. Uh, but he himself cares a lot about the rules. And so it's very sneaky. And a, a friend of mine said, Hey, be careful in this match. FYI, this guy's been known to call you on ticky tack, been, been known to call people out on ticky tack things. Okay. He is also one to like do ticky tack things and try to get away with it. Like I heard a, there was a story that somebody told me where he hit, hit one OB kind of replayed from a weird drop on the next tee. He was like, actually, no, we did that wrong. I should be able to go back and replay the hole. And they were like, what? It's not how this works. Wow. Long story short, I'm a two, he's a zero. He's not happy about it because he's getting two. he's getting two strokes. Okay. Uh, I go two up early. I'm on the seventh tee. This guy's grumbling. I have Jan my bag. My golf bag says Janko Golf Coaching on it, which is the guy that I take lessons from. Try to support him. Try to support my guy. He's a great guy. Friend of the pod. I, friend of the pod. I go two up early. This guy mumbles to me on the fifth hole. He goes, "God, how am I fucking? How am I giving strokes to a guy who has his golf coach's name stitched on his bag?" And I was like, "Oh, here we go." He said this to you, <laughs> to me, and it was just like, me like and him. low, like low enough that you could hear it, or he was like saying it to you. <laughs> Like he's like, ha ha ha, ah, funny. I'm giving strokes to a guy who's got his golf coach's name on his bag, and I don't have any friends. This is we're playing on a Tuesday afternoon. It took us forever to schedule this match, yeah, because I got kids, I have a life. He he does not, and so there was a lot. There was a, it took it was insane to schedule anyway. 
So I'm like, oh, here we go. And he's uh, can can run a bit hot. And so I'm two up now. He's already made that comment. I'm like, here it comes. Here it's coming. Seventh hole, I hit my I hit a drive way left onto the driving range. He hits his in the fairway. I go, I'm going to go, I'm going to hit another one. I tee it up. I hit it. We're walking down the fairway and he goes, yeah, you know, you really got to say, uh, oh no, on the tee box, he goes, I go, I'm going to hit another one. Tee it up. He goes, he goes, provisional, right? I go, yes. I hit it again. My ball's in the fairway. We're walking down the fairway. He goes, yeah, you know, I said that because you really got to be careful out here. Some guys would call you on that. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, call me on what? We just said, is it a provisional? I go find my ball. It's fine over there. I hit it on the green from over there. I two putt. I make a four. He makes a five. Nobody says anything. He picks up my ball in the middle of the fairway, throws it to me. We walk to the eighth tee. He gives me the tee because I won the hole. So I'm three up now. Long story short, we go to 16, 16th hole. I won 16. I think I'm three up because I am three up. So you're not playing anymore. I'm not playing anymore. Tap in my ball. I want to get home. It's t- but whatever. We're on 17, 18. We're way out by we're way out. Like we just might as well finish anyway, play the last two holes. On 16, I hole out. He just storms off and goes to 17. And I'm like, okay, weird. Like I just won the match. Normally, any normal person would be like, hey man, g- you know, good match. Like acknowledging yeah. the match is over. I'm like, well, that's strange. He didn't say anything. He gets up to 17 in a huff, tees off on 17, hits his ball on the green, two putts. I'm just kind of dicking around. I don't. Whatever. We go to 17. We go to 18. He tees off again on 18. He hits his ball way left on 18 OB. He takes his sweet ass time. He's he re-tees. I'm like, hey man, like let's just get this thing in the clubhouse. Like the sun's setting. Like we don't need to, you don't need to hit a provisional here. Like the match is over. He goes, What? The match isn't the match isn't over. I'm one up. I said, wait, what? So he goes, yeah. Reset reset the stage. You think you're you think you've won the match. You're on the I'm we're on the 18th tee. And you think you're what? you think you're two up? Three it's up? over. The match is over. I won. I was three up on 16. Three and two. So, three and two. So he thinks that he won 17, right? So he he thinks he, he because I didn't play out the hole. So he won, he thinks he won 17. And so somehow in his mind, I think maybe it was two, maybe I was two up on on 16. No, right. the, the match had been over. So I was three up. He thinks, he thinks I'm only, he thinks I'm only one up on 18. Long story short. This guy hasn't said a word to me in about forty-five minutes. I said, "Hey, man, you don't need to, you don't need you don't need to hit another one. This this match is over." He goes, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "I'm only one down." I go, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, I won seventeen. He goes, "I won seventeen, and actually, oh no, this is what it was." He says, "You lost seven. I said, "What?" He said, "Yeah, man, we're we're even right now. We you were only two up on sixteen. He goes, "I told you, I told you, you shouldn't have hit that ball on seven. I'm like, and again, wait. going back to the seven, seven was the one where you, you give me seven again, seven. I hit a provisional right, seven. Right. I hit, I hit my first drive way left second drive down the fairway. I, before I hit the, before I hit the second ball, I said, I'm going to hit another right. one. He goes provisional, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you found your, your first near the drive. Found my ball. I the won green. the hole. Yeah. He doesn't mention, he doesn't mention it on that hole. He let, he leads me to the, I take the eighth tee. He doesn't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been two hours since he's mentioned this provisional, of which he said out loud, this is a provisional, right? Yeah. So he goes on the middle of the 18th fairway. He's looking for his ball left. I'm hit mine in the middle of the fairway. He goes, no, dude, we're even right now. He goes, I told you, you shouldn't have hit that ball on seven. I go- Like you shouldn't hit the provisional. Yeah, like you, you should have- You like, somehow lost the hole because you hit a provisional? And I didn't, I didn't say like, this is a provisional. You just said I'm hitting another one. I'm you hitting another one. You didn't use the- the, like the term he wanted to use or maybe so anyway, the, the three guys that I play That's... golf, this happened on a Tuesday night and the three guys that I play golf with on Wednesday morning, we, we looked this up and two of them are like rules aficionados. They yeah. ate this up. It's, it was acknowledged that that ball was a, was a provisional. Okay. Which is separate from separate from the point. So uh, let me, let me, I'll get, I'll get back there in a second. Finish 18. I stole, I've never done this in my life. I, a physical like feeling came into my body that I have never felt before in my life because it's just two, uh, it's just the two of us out there. This is a recreational match for some meaningless thing at the club. Right. And I go, I have heard all these things about this guy anyway. And he was a pain in the ass to me trying to get him scheduled to play in this match in the first place. Right. So he goes, 
He goes, yeah, man, we're even. I go, no fucking way. I goes, dude, I was three up on 16. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, you lost that hole on seven because you hit the provisional. I'm like, what are you? You didn't say anything to me on seven. You gave me the T on eight. You're not, you didn't say anything. And by the way, I just, I said, you said provisional, right? For all those reasons, this is nuts. The match is over. I picked up my ball in the middle of the 18th fairway and I just went, fuck you. And I, I walked home. I walked to my car and I got in the car. You, you took your minutes, ball and left. Literally took my ball and left. I'm like, I'm not giving you the pleasure, the, the pleasure of this. Best part is I find out later he goes into the golf shop and tells the pro like what happened. And the pro is like, hold on. So you said it was a provisional and you're, you think you like the whole thing was nuts. Yeah. And that was my first like real life example of like, wow, this is what happens in recreational amateur golf. There are people out there like this. Okay. And let me just replay this for you. Even if I didn't, even if the, even if you have to say provisional, like, did either of us not know that was a fucking provisional? This is a recreate like you're going to be that guy in a one-on-one like recreational golf match at your golf course to be yep yep you didn't say provisional you knew I hit it that's yeah, how that's, this game works. There's I'll like t- when I hear so- stories like this, I don't think about like I'm I'm already past the like how ridiculous it is. I'm I'm more doing like a psychological evaluation on this person. Like what's wrong with this person that. Like, is there anything you would like to do in your life where you win or come out on top that way? Like, no. what is the, no. what is the, especially if you're like a, scra- a stick handicap, right? Like you're, Dude, you're putting in the I, time for what? To cheat people out of shit? We, we were, t- I was talking about this with a couple of guys that I play with. Even if that was in like the, the Vermont AM, like a serious tournament, right? If the guy in my group said, I'm going to hit another one and he hit another one and he didn't use the term provisional, you think I'm going to mark up his card and give him like a double when he made a bogey? Of course not. We all know you're hitting another one. You got to hit another one anyway. And the fact that it was in this, these circumstances, like that's what made my blood boil more than anything. I'm like, this matters for nothing. And I was like, you know what, dude, if you want to, if you want to say that you won this match, have it. (laughs) All right. I got some questions. Uh, you may have mentioned this at the top, but how old is this person? Ish? I don't know. Maybe maybe like th- early thirties. Okay. And is a member at the club? Yeah. Have you seen this person since? I have and uh have ignored this person at every opportunity that I've had. Does this person have uh, friends at the club? Yes, but friends is term is is loosely. Almost everybody that I know has a story like this and has has a story about this person being a somewhat like character that does some things that you're like, you'd play golf with him, but you're like, man, that, that guy's kind of like weird or not weird, but like, he's always got a thing. There's always a, there's always something that happens. Like you're a, you're a scratch golfer. This has happened. Scratch golfer. You shoot 82 on the first day of the club championship. And then, the, then you don't play the rest of the weekend. Cause you hurt your wrist. He's the, he's that guy. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so how anyway. did, what, what was the, what was the outcome? Like, how did it, the, the outcome was I won. Was I won the? The outcome was I won the match. He went in. He went into the clubhouse to try to like, yeah. you know, expect something else. I went in. I wrote my name on the list, and I emailed the next guy in the bracket, and I said, "Hey, John, we're supposed to play our next match. Like, can you play on Tuesday at at eleven o'clock?" And we and, and that guy's like, "Yeah, on. Dave, you won. I'm not playing the other guy." <laughs> uh, that's that's insane. I real quick. Uh, last week was the Sony Open, right? I, I'm getting my Hawaii tournaments. Yeah, the second was the Hawaii. That was the three man playoff. Did you catch yes. that? Did you happen to catch that? It was um I didn't I didn't catch it, no. Grayson Murray won, but it was also um Keegan and Ben on, I think. Yeah. When they got to the eighteenth uh T box where they that was the first playoff hole, you know how you gotta identify your ball that you just like these three guys just mumbled to each other. They're like, I gotta I can play in blah 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 blah. <laughs> it was like obviously you don't need to know what ball Keegan Bradley's hitting because you're going to know where it is. There's 30,000 people watching this live right now, but it's still the rule. Right. And these guys just completely, I was blown away by how they're just like, well, not a single one of them heard what each other said. Like I got this right, with a Srix on seven. Yeah. I got a circle line. Yeah. It all said at the same time, the rules guy was right there. Like it's a, it's a, what do they say? It's like the spirit of the rule. Like people yeah. that take it, that seriously or just like i play in a uh, a very serious member guest it's a four-day member guest every year in maine it's like a 150 year old tournament probably like a hundred year old it's people take it really really seriously and a lot of older people take it really really seriously and my dad and i i think we've played i don't know 
12, 13, 14 years in this, you pl- end up playing three or four matches um, a year or, you know, in, during that week. Um, and I, going back to high school too, I played a ton of match play. I probably played over 100, 150 match play matches in my life. Our goal every year is just don't be an asshole. And I know it sounds like easier than it should, but you'd be blown away by how petty people are, how, and it goes back to that thing. Why do you, like, how, did, how can you ever go home if that guy, if you were like, fuck it, whatever, you can have the win. How's that guy going home and being like, yeah, good, I accomplished this. Like, are you that's, so removed from reality that you think it's right? I don't, and to your point, that, he's the why, rules stickler. He, he, he would be the first, he would be the, the two years ago in the club championship. He, he threw a fit because one of the guys in front of us had a greens book, which was completely legal to have. So anyway, this is greens one book. of the things that drives me nuts about golf is there, are, there are people like this. However, you know what case there's people like this that play, we used to play in a pickup basketball league. You know, you might play in a men's softball league. That's there's different. always, there's always someone you throw a human in sports in a, not in a, in a, you know, it's, it's nuts. And so, that's why you know you you hear stories like Patrick Reed on tour or whatever. Like there, people are gonna be people wherever at whatever level you're at. I just couldn't believe like I couldn't believe that 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 was the outcome. And now now this is the story. Like how do you not have the self awareness to know like I'm gonna tell this story on this podcast. I'm gonna tell it to everybody that I've ever played golf with. Like yeah, and and I, you were saying like this guy has a. He said something like he has a reputation or he's known for being a guy that blah, blah, blah. In life, I don't know what the full list is, but it's like, don't kill anyone. Don't be this kind of person. And never be the kind of person where they say, oh, that guy. A lot of people know. Like, don't be a person that stands out in a bad way to a group of, like, uncommon people that just share yeah. this one view. The, on the you. problem That's is you can say that. You can say that. I completely agree. But it's usually that person who lacks the self-awareness to even have this conversation yeah. in, in the in the first in the first place. And so... When I told this story to other people, even people that I didn't even know that well, like through golf, they're like, oh yeah, I've, I've heard stuff like that about him before. Yeah. So. And, the, and the cheating and the being like a rule meister always goes hand in hand. Because like to course, exploit the rules and to course. break them, you've got to know them better than anyone. That is imagine, a But imagine, point. imagine like I didn't fight that or I didn't, I, like imagine you, you won, you went to bed at night, you won your match based on a little tiny rule loophole that you didn't bring up for two and a half hours. And then on the 18th hole, you're like, oh yeah, remember that thing that we didn't talk about two and a half hours ago? That was wrong. You lose. I win. You're going to go home that night and be like, yeah, baby, won my match. Like, I am i don't want that. I don't need that. I got enough going, good things going on in my life. I don't want that. So that's what drives me nuts. I'm with you. Golf. That's that's ridiculous. And I, I love that you now have this like mortal enemy there. I mean, he, he has many enemies, so it's not unique, but for you, you have one and that's someone yeah. you you know, you're going to find yourself. Hey, I, in a I see, with that guy. I see these things as positives. I'm like, you know what? I've now weeded that guy out of my life. I'm not, I don't have to play golf. Well, that's what I'm again. saying. You might not have like, how many tournaments do you play where you could be matched up with that guy again? A couple, a, a yeah. couple. There was uh, almost, let me tell you, Dave, <laughs> I, I know our, our, uh, grinders tour thing is the loser has to caddy for the other person. If you get matched up with a guy, I need like you want like come? five hours notice. That's it. <laughs> like if it's a well, thing it's... like, oh, I just found out tomorrow I'm matched up with this guy. I'm in a car with my caddy uniform on the way there, and I will have a rule book. I'll have the I'll have every rule book in the world. I'll have the live rule Let's book. Go. With me. Let's go. I love that. That's the type of energy that I want. Mm-hmm. And the, anybody that I've told this story to, they've had they've had the similar they've had the similar reaction. So if that's an in or, in or out, I'm out on that guy. I'm also, I'm in yeah. on you saying, fuck you. And, and <laughs> you say, fuck this or fuck you. I said, fuck you. And I like, yeah. I didn't even, I try to be a very, very kind person in public. Like I just, I try to always take the high road. I try to never talk shit about anybody. I am definitely on, I don't know if you listen to shotgun start, but the end on Fridays, they do this segment called golf advice. And every one of their listeners writes in and they have, you have to, you, it's like a running joke on the pod, but you say like, how old you are, if you have kids or not, and what level of appetite you have for a fight. And so I'd be like, I'm 36 years old. I have two kids. I have absolutely zero interest in fighting. That's a different answer than if I was 20, like when I was 23, like when we're 23 in basketball city, like we would have scrapped. No, I have no interest in that anymore. So I try to never, ever do anything that would take something to that level. In that moment, it just came out of me because I like physically could not believe this was happening. Yeah. Cause it's like, you have two options. You can either 
present your case, which is going to take like a while. You'd be like, well, on this blah, blah, and this, or you realize you're talking to someone who's not even going to listen to that. It's exactly so what say, I did. I'm going to save like, some breaths here. No, nah, this is nuts. This is insane. You are, they are who they thought they were. We, you know, I just, I had to go home. Yeah. I just left immediately. I love that. Uh, I know you live on the course. Is that like not, was it, you want like the storm off to have like some kind of a exit you can see. That's not like a long walk, right? So you can kind of turn a corner and it's like, wow, he stormed out of there. But if you're like turned around and had to walk like down 17 across 16, what yeah. was the walk? No, like? I, I don't, I don't live. I live very close. I live, okay, gotcha. I live like a quarter mile from the course. So I had to thin it is a par five. And I had, I had to walk like, 300 yards of the par five go down through the tunnel go under the bridge go up to the parking lot put my clubs in the parking lot yeah. pull my car out which is parallel to the 18th, 18th green and drive home so there was it was not like it was, my car was not right there but like yeah. i'm also in much better shape than this guy and so there's no way he was in a cart that was the other thing it drove me nuts i walked he took a cart a cart i hate when cart. people do oh, like this a, a pull cart or like a, a golf cart a golf cart and he i hate when people do this when i'm playing them in a match or something he would hit his ball like right in the hazard and he would you know take the cart and go way up there first and always would magically oh, this, find his ball right this he, is, that, that this is all the rule thing the the cart, this is what these guys do in these member sense. guests too thing right right somebody hits one near the hazard okay that you just you go as fast as you can over to find your ball on the other fairway and like boom you found it and i'm walking and i'm like whatever man i can't i'm not gonna like let this guy get my blood pressure it's, up. it's insane well that guy we're gonna have another run in with that guy I'm, I'm i'm positive but i'm looking forward to it <laughs> we i hope we i hope you're I'm, there I, for it well put it this way if you have another interaction with him on the golf course it means i'm going to be there because if you play him i'm going to be there so. <laughs> okay <laughs> how about just and i'll be in a cart just i won't even have your bag it's like you have your you, you carry and walk with your bag like oh this is my caddy like well he has a carpet he doesn't have your clubs but no he's just gonna he's not a four caddy he's just gonna watch you all day <laughs> yeah, who's who's that guy <laughs> i'm in um, I have a real quick in inner OB and we can, we can right. close with this. It, I just, right. it actually came to me as you were talking, but it's something that I always think about. So like I mentioned, we play in, um, play in a member guest, like a, a big four day one every year. Yeah. A lot of, I don't get to play four consecutive days of golf very often. Uh, I don't really, I play golf often, but not consecutively. So like when I start playing a lot, I, I get a lot better. Uh, and I, imagine, I feel better that. and I, right, exactly. This is uh breaking news. Good thing. We <laughs> yeah. too bad. It's at the end of the pod, but when I'm in this tournament, like I'll get in a groove and we've, we've, I mean, we'll lose to 70 year old guys, like, or 80 year old guys. Like, well, it's all handicap adjusted, but we'll lose these matches. We shouldn't. And we'll beat these guys that are like scratches. Uh, it's always, always kind of hit or miss. But for me, like I, if I get going, like we've won a few matches on the 10th green, which is almost, it's almost impossible. Like it's whatever it was, eight straight wins and a push or whatever. But like, I'm big on like getting a lot of scores in. I We've won matches like on the 14th, 15th hole. In our OB, Dave, playing in after that, like you played in with this guy, but like I, I'm all, if we beat someone, I'd be like, I'm only giving you an example of when, we beat someone because if we lost, I would have been the fuck out of there. So that's yeah. why I'm not saying we always win, but I will always be like, hey, you guys want to play in? And they're always like, no. And they just kind of walk back. But is that rude to ask someone you just beat if they still want? Because like I got four more holes and I'm trying to break like 80, right? So like, I'm sorry we lost this early or you lost this early, but I'm still going to continue playing. <laughs> and, and, the, and the club is like, we want everyone off the course because we got to turn the pins up. We got to do a lot of maintenance and it's also a slow yeah. day there's a lot of different I don't, systems. I don't have a problem with it i prob personally i don't have a problem with it because usually in those types of events like you're you're rushing in to not go right back out anyway and yeah. i'm not a big like hang around the clubhouse guy and so like if i got a couple holes left i would probably go i i don't i don't you get a good round playing. going you get a good <laughs> round going you you <laughs> Look, this is but well, this is this is pre. This is a pre. Say, uh, just play not or when Jin would just count play nine. nine. Yeah. Well, the, well, there's a lot of there's a bunch of issues with that because usually in that format you're not strictly playing like your own your your own ball, and so like th there's a it, if it's a match play scenario, like did you did you play out did you play out each one of your well so important shots to, yeah important to know about, play. about yeah it's it's all it's all um 
it's match play, it's stroke, it's just handicap adjusted. So you're, you are playing your own ball. There's only one match a day, too. That's, that's key. I'm not like delaying a second afternoon round. Like there's yeah, one yeah. match every day. Okay. That's, they, don't, they don't double back. Yeah. It's one no, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I just would probably phrase it differently. I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, invite them. I would be like, hey, we're just going to play these last three holes. Hey, you're like, welcome to join us. Pr- pretty for much these last holes we've been playing for three hours together but you're welcome to continue yeah yeah the, i'd the, also it's always a little sketchy i'd also kind of probably want to like i get wanting to play more golf and finish out the holes but like especially in that environment there's usually lots of alcohol people are drunk and angry or whatever because they just lost you like i i wouldn't want to sign up for three more holes with that guy <laughs> you know like because we want to finish this round. I have no problem with you doing it. I wouldn't invite others to do it with me. I would kind of let them drive off and then go tee my ball up and play the last three holes. All right. Well, I'll work on that. Ne- next time I happen to win. For, I'll, uh... It's just for somebody who, who would rather play by himself than talk to a stranger, you're going to invite guys that you just beat in this very competitive thing. To be like, well, it's, you, it's you guys want to go the, play three more? Well, it's less the invite. It's more the like, I got to tell you, like, you're gonna th- you're gonna think I'm gonna walk this way with you, but I'm gonna go this way, and like I need to break the ice. Like, hey, I'm just we're gonna keep playing because I want to keep playing. Like, do you would you guys? It's probably happened like four or five times, and I'd say all but once they just said no, thank you. They just wanted to, and I, I get it. It just again, that's not the inner OB like them saying yes or no. It's me. Like, is should I even do I extend the invite? No, is I wouldn't even, extend the invite. Yeah. I just would go just play. But it's also just, a thing like you just have as much right to be here as me so i shouldn't even be inviting you to the thing that you're already doing anyway you know yeah like if i invited you to this podcast right now with two minutes left you'd be like yeah okay dave i invite you to finish the podcast with me i would finish out the holes don't tell anybody let them let them i would kind of slow play it let them put their stuff in their cart let them drive off and then once they drive off i'm i would go tee it up and go okay. play 16 17 18. well this this member guest i was talking about that I, I play in every year is an untapped resource for stories i've got Two million. So, all right. Well, I feel really good about. I feel like that was therapeutic. I feel really good about getting that off my chest. Um, so, yeah, can I clip that, or is this guy on uh, Instagram? No, don't clip. Don't clip that. Let Let's leave that in for. Uh, send don't, it right over to the yeah, clubhouse. Clip that and throw some money behind that on reels. Um, <laughs> I did happen to check though. This guy doesn't follow me on social media anymore. So, oh, how funny is that? Do you know what he does? <laughs> you don't have to say it, but uh, treats no. people out of golf. <laughs> yeah pretty, pretty i can make much. my own uh pretty much reference. you can make your own assumptions i'll tell you exactly. i'll tell you uh i'll tell you in our slack well all right hey look if you're listening to this if you're still listening to casey and i send us an email long game pod at gmail tell us your most absurd blood boiling competitive mildly competitive golf story now that i let that off my chest let you into our life a little bit tell i want to hear your story back um and we'll talk to you on oh, the next real quick, episode. Maybe, Go ahead, Case. I might have, real quick, maybe I will leave the listeners with a question. This is something sure. I was thinking about. I did zero sure. research on. I'm going to ask, and we can maybe come back to this next week. So I'll, I'll, we'll do some research on it. But All right, let's come back. I was thinking about uh, um, uh, Dunlop was on 59 watch for a little bit on Saturday. And I was thinking about 59s. And whenever there's one in contention, I'm, all, I'm always like, what's the course? Is it a par 70, rarely 71 or 72 or the... Uh, century was like a 73 right there's some different um courses out there and i was thinking i'm just gonna be vulnerable here i don't know if this is a really dumb question but i didn't do the research and i haven't looked into it, it just ca- came to me now is this a dumb question is my question i was wondering do 59s happen more often on par 70s or 72 is there an advantage to one or the other i know it's course specific but is that a dumb question we can maybe no, get it's not a dumb this. question actually i was listening to this and these does a par does the higher par mean like they were talking about this with Kapalua? I think it might have been on Shotgun Start, who guys are much smarter oh, really? on the technical side of golf. They were like, should this should this course be a par? Like the, they should raise the par. And so if like, the par is seventy eight, does that mean guys will go more under par? Yeah. Versus, well, when like, you're thinking, especially like a fifty nine, is it obviously a par a par seventy? You need less birdies, whatever, to get right. But there. is that but, harder? Is does the seventy two give you is the par? I assume that'd be two extra par fives or whatever or, or right. What, however they would do it, but it's going to be an right. extra par f- uh, five or two. Does that bring in more opportunity for like eagles, which is something you wouldn't get on a 
So I'm just curious, like, I'm sure you can go through Wait, so all does the 59s a, does a, does and see. Does a par 70, you're saying, is there, is there more eagle opportunities with with a higher par because like, there's more? Have, you have a better chance of shooting 59 on a 72 because there's more gettable holes because right. there's eagles no, are more. Not a, I've thought about this a lot. Or, or, or like, but in my mind, when I play golf and I'm like, find out that it's a par 70, I'm like, oh, nice. If I shoot five over, that's 75. Yeah. <laughs> Versus 77, right? It, or like isn't it? It, on the quest to break 80. I play this one course all the time and I'm like, oh, I forgot the back. I forgot. I, I'm three over. I thought that was going to be 39. I, I forgot it's a part 35 in the back. So I just thought 38. Yeah. But yeah. that's totally not the right way to think about well, it. I was just thinking about this too. Like, it's so funny. Our whole lives we think about like, I shot this, I shot this, I shot this. Like I'm, I'm trying to shoot this. I've never once thought about if the course was a 70, 71 or 72. Never or like any of those things. Have you? It's so funny. That actually changes like how well you played relative to other times. But I agree. I agree. Fun. Well, right, let us know us if I'm note. dumb for asking that or or not. All right. And uh, I'll just leave you with Rory. Come on the pod. He's talking the wrong game.